welcome back, and thanks for joining us again as we're in our second week of our study of Mark from the Smith and Hellways Formation Series. And today, Christy, we're going to be talking about fishing. Um, I think we talked about maybe renaming this lesson Go Fish, but it, you know, the, the focal verse for you and I were, is verse 17, and Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And so we want to talk today a little bit about what does it mean to be fishers of people. Uh, Christy, I know that uh, our focal verses, our passage this week, starts in verse 14 and 15. How does that relate to being fishers of people? So, Joe, what I see in verses 14 and 15 are really um, Jesus speaking about the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And that's his one-line ser- one sermon to us. And I think the way that that relates to being fishers of people is that he's talking about, um, you know, announcing the kingdom of God. And what, and what is this kingdom of God? And it, it's about grace and forgiveness, um, simplicity, inclusion. And it, it's a new beginning for these people. In order to experience this, he's saying, okay, you need to repent and believe in the good news. And, and the good news were those things that, that I just mentioned. And this was sort of like the beginning. This was the, the, the draw. Uh, I would say like a good fisherman usually has good bait or good lures you know, this was his announcement uh, of saying to the people, hey, the, this time is now a, a new time. It, it's it's a, a new day, and, and, and I have a bigger plan, and you're going to see this evolve. And, you know, this is so opposite, Joe, from probably the religion that they had experienced during that time where, there was lots of confusion, there were threats, there was a lot of exclusion, and it really wasn't, a lot of it focused on, on works and, and, you know, you have to do this or you have to do that. And so this was a whole new concept about how to get people to, to follow and believe. What about you? Well, I think, I think what you said there is absolutely correct, and I really like the contrast between what religion was and what it was getting ready to become as the good news. And, and I think as we move from there, Jesus, you know, Mark records in his gospel what this really looks like. And, and I love that the first thing he does is he goes and he calls these men uh, who happen to be fishermen. I mean, you know, it's, you know, how cool is that, right? And he calls them to, 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 to repent. In a, in a manner of speaking. Uh, you know, I think it kind of lives out verse 15 because for these men, they were currently fishing as a business, as a vocation. And Jesus said, hey, come follow me. Turn away from that business. I have a better business for you. And, and I really like that. I see a lot of, uh, I see a lot of things that we connect with in our life. These, these were people who were not doing something bad and were called to repent so often we hear that word repent, we think turn away from sin or turn away from something that is not honorable. But what we really see here is it's really turning away from something good, turning to something that's much better. And so I, I really think that that is, you know, is, is portrayed or that is just kind of lived out in, in the way that Jesus, you know, the way he did that. Now, what do you think he meant? Christy, when he says fish for people. Joe, I think he he meant, I want you to go out and help people who are in need. Meet them where they are. And um, I'm going to show you how to do that. You know, a good teacher always demonstrates, you know, a, a new concept. And I think what he was telling these folks is, hey, I need, I'm going to go and spread this good news and I want you to partner with me and I'm going to show you how to do it because the 
needs God's you know salvation and grace and he actually you know if we move into verse 21 he starts to take them to Capernaum which ironically is a fishing village and they start to enter the synagogue and again how many times has he gone in to the temple and he begins to teach and, and they are so um, amazed with with his teaching because it, it, it's so different from what they're accustomed to. And um, this is where we start to see his first, I guess what I would call the heal, healing part of the ministry or the healing ministry. And um, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what he does once he gets into the temple and who he meets there and who he encounters? Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting because, you know, Jesus is going to, like you said, he's going to give them an example of what it means to be fishers of people. And, you know, I think one of the things that I read about this week is, you know, the ocean where fish live. In Old Testament, a lot of times the great bodies of water were kind of synonymous with a crisis, a place where you need to be rescued from, a place of fear. And so I think it's interesting that you're, you know, it's almost like you're pulling fish away from that or you're pulling people, because you're going to be fishers of people, you're pulling people out of the chaos. And uh, it, it's so interesting to me, I kind of guess tongue-in-cheek a little bit. And he says, come on, guys, I'm going to show you how to be fishers for people. Find me a church, and I guarantee I can find somebody who has a need. And so the first place they go is to a church. And what they encounter in the church is this, this person who has this unclean spirit. And, you know, for me, that is a metaphor for, you know, chaos in our lives. You know, not necessarily always caused by something we did, but, you know, listen, there's chaos in our lives. We live in a chaotic world. We, we live in a world of free will and free choice. That's the way God set it up. We, we encounter people who, you know, have pain, and we encounter people who, uh, you know, really need something. And so, yeah, what I, what I see here is Jesus showed them what it meant to be fishers of people by rescuing from chaos this one who was, uh, as the scripture said, was possessed by an unclean spirit. And, um, you know, it's interesting to me, um, you know, when we think about that, you know, a lot of times we think about being fishers of people. So often we think of that, Christy, as being um, evangelical, like we're trying to, you know, you know, save people. But I, but I think it can be really interpreted as any time we encounter people who have pain in their life and we can minister to them, we can show God's love to them. So that's what I think, you know, he was trying to show them about what it meant to be fishers of people. I would agree. What do you think, Christy? Do you think um, when, when you when you read this story, any particular takeaways? Uh, yes, Joe. I well, I love the uh, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. I also really love the verse about the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe in the good news. And I think that's just a continuation for me from last week when we talked about a new beginning. Um, in December, you will recall we read in Isaiah, we heard that phrase, in the fullness of time. And then here we say the time is fulfilled. And, you know, I just think that has a lot to do with the new beginning, um, you've got to repent, which means, hey, you've got to turn, a, you've got to turn away from something. Something has to change. And um, then the, the piece of believe. I mean, there, there's just a, there are a lot of verbs, action verbs in, in that particular sentence. And I think the main thing for me is I really feel like that, I need to stop and think about, you know, how, how am I going to do those things and do them well so that I can allow myself to be ready to follow him and to be fishers of people like he is intended me to be. I, obviously, I 
Um, you know, I, I, I truly believe and, and I feel like that I follow, but I don't know about you, but I, I my fish line sometimes get tangled up, Joe. And <laughs> sometimes it's just not a it's just not a good experience and I know I've shared with you before that, that I am an introvert. I play an extrovert during the day. And so the thoughts of, you know, going where all the people go and to plunge myself into someone else's chaos, that can be a little overwhelming to me. And so I think that verse speaks to me specifically about, um, you know, Believe in the good news. Believe in God's plan versus what Christy feels like. How about yourself? What was your takeaway for the week? Well, you know, my takeaway, you know, I think Jesus in, in his verse, first few verses there when he says that the kingdom of God has come near, I, I think he was inviting all of us to be a part of that. You know, when we say the kingdom of God, often we think about, well, that's where God lives. Uh, that's eternity, that's heaven, whatever we call that. But I think he was saying that the kingdom of God is here. We can experience heaven on earth. And he was inviting all of us to be a part of that. And so I think being fishers of people, you know, that there's a there, there's a key there that Jesus is teaching us about how to experience heaven on earth, which is nothing really different than the joy we feel via the Holy Spirit whenever we put others' needs ahead of ours. So, you know, being fishers of people really starts and stops with, you know, loving others and, and putting others, uh, making others' needs important to us. And so that was a challenge for me this week was to think about, you know, how can how can I live up to this idea of being a fisher of people? And uh, so anyway, that was that was kind of my takeaway this week. Well, hey, listen, next week we're going to jump into Chapter 2, Christy, and uh, the title of next week's lesson is Jesus Welcomes Sinners. And the central question is what keeps me from welcoming others in Jesus' name? So kind of a continuation, I think, of being fishers of people. But it should be fun. Look forward to seeing everybody. I hope everybody has a great week this week. God bless you, and we'll see you again next time. 